I feel like April, hopefully, is like the end of my reading slump and we can only go up from here. Hopefully, I feel like, as I keep saying that, I'm like scared that I'm gonna jinx myself, but let's just, let's be positive about it. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back. If you've been here before, I'm so happy that you clicked on my little video and you decided to spend some time with me hopefully today i wanted to share all the books that i read in the month of april it was a pretty good reading month for me i read seven books total which i think last month i read six or seven so it's about the same, but I felt like a lot of the books this month were hits for me. I also found myself not really feeling like too slumpy like I was in the other months. Also, I'm filming in a new spot and I feel like you guys are slowly accessing more and more of my apartment, but I really like this spot. You can kind of see like my little shelves. I got a new light, isn't it so cute? It's very cozy and you can see my pup. I'm on my couch, I'm comfy, I have a blanket here. I feel like this might be the ideal spot for me. I don't know, we'll see. Let me know if you like this spot. I think it's really cute. This is gonna be a jam-packed video. And I didn't plan on it originally, but I think it's just gonna hopefully not be too long, but it is gonna be longer because in the month of April, I went to New York. I went with Ivana and we went to go visit Kat. So I wanted to include some of the clips that I took while we were there. Hello, editing cat here. Just to say, I'm actually going to make a completely separate video for my little New York trip. So I'm not gonna add the clips into this one. I'm hoping to have this be a little extra video so hopefully it'll be posted within a week of this video we'll see fingers crossed i'm gonna try and edit my little heart out to get it out to you guys okay bye back to the video and then i also wanted to do a reading challenge check-in i just like to do that every month because it helps keep me accountable even if for some of those challenges i didn't do anything. If I didn't complete it, it's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna try and keep it short. So for each of these books, I'm gonna quickly kind of give a little bit of a synopsis, what I loved, what I didn't love, and kind of keep it quick. So let's get into them. I'm so excited. The first book that I read was The Possession by Annie Ernaux. This one it was a buddy read with Kat, and it's a little tiny, tiny, tiny book. I think, I feel like this is probably one of the shortest books I've read, at least this year, for sure. It's 62 pages, and it's basically about a relationship that Annie was in, and that's come to an end. Now she's kind of grieving that. She's kind of going through that process and like dealing with all of those feelings that come up. The person that she's no longer with, is now seeing someone else. She's having to deal with those feelings that come up and the jealousy that she feels. The writing of this was absolutely beautiful. This is my first or no that I've ever read. It's not gonna be the last one, that's for sure. This was just like so good and some of the sentences are just like, they just hit. I think she does a great job with writing feelings that I've also felt before. She does it so like beautifully where it's like, oh wow, someone else is also felt similarly when it comes to like the way she talks about jealousy and like once that relationship ends and wanting to know everything about that other person that they're dating. I think that's so relatable. I do have some quotes that I want to read. I've started annotating. So fun little fact, I've started annotating. I didn't annotate this one, but I do want to do a reread of it so that I can go in and start tabbing it up. But I have my handy dandy iPad with my story graph. On here, I, I inputted all of the quotes that I saved. Ooh, there's just so many good ones. I don't know how to pick. Let's see. I'll read a few because there's some that really stuck with me. So the first one is, I've succeeded in filling with words the absent image and the name of the woman who for six months continued to put on her makeup, to go about her business, to talk, and to enjoy herself without suspecting that she was also living elsewhere in the head and the skin of another woman. Let's see, another one. Didn't I tell you? Placed me in the sphere of friends, and if people want to see us from time to time. I was no longer the first and indispensable trustee of his daily life. Didn't I tell you? Reminded me of my function as an occasional ear. Didn't I tell you? Was the same as I didn't need to tell you. Oof. I just, I think she captures when you're no longer in a relationship with someone and it's someone that you used to talk to all the time and then it goes from that to never speaking to them again or like slowly fading and no longer speaking to them. She captured that so beautifully. I just, I really love this book. 
you have to read it. It's so short that it's like so worth it. I read The Days of Abandonment. It kind of reminded me of that. I remember The Days of Abandonment being really, really intense to read. This one was intense, but a little bit different. But just like the concept and the way that they're both able to write about jealousy and what it's like when a relationship ends, I feel like they did, the, did it so beautifully. So that's the possession. That's the first one. I started off April with a bang. I feel like that was such a good, good read. Okay, and then the next book that I finished was You Be Mother by Meg Mason. Opposite of Annie or No, this is a chunkier book. This was a buddy read with Seiki. I think she softy enough it, and I can see why, but let me jump into what this book is about. So basically, we're following Abby, and she lives in the UK, I believe. She gets pregnant by someone who's visiting from Australia. She ends up dropping everything in the UK and she goes to live in Australia with her boyfriend. They're trying to raise the child together. Her partner's like always working and it's mainly her taking care of the child. She's very lonely. She doesn't have any friends and she basically becomes friends with the next door neighbor and the next door neighbor is very well off and she kind of takes Abby under her wing kind of like another daughter. So we kind of see that relationship. It's a multiple point of view. You get to see Abby's point of view. There's a chapter where you see her boyfriend's point of view. You also see Phil's point of view and also her daughter's points of view. So I really like that aspect. I really love Meg Mason's writing. I just think this one was very, very long and I feel like it could have been a little bit shorter. I can see why I'd say he's softy enough. This one, I it took me a while to kind of get into it. There's something so interesting between Sorrow and Bliss and this one where she talks about, there's the two sisters who are, who are Phil's daughters. And I think the way she writes those re like sibling relationships is really, really interesting. Like I love, I love the sister relationship in Sorrow and Bliss. And I also really love the sister relationship in You Be Mother. I think there's just something about Meg Mason's writing that I really, really enjoy. And the complexities between the different relationships. I overall really like this, but I, I just don't know how other people might feel about it. Like I feel like they might think it's too long and it's too slow because it is it is long and it is a very slow paced book, but I really liked it. So I don't know, take that for what you will. I wouldn't say it's a favorite. Sorrow and Bliss was definitely a favorite read of mine. Not my favorite, but I still really, really enjoyed it. Okay, and then the next book that I read in April, I don't have a physical copy of because I listened to it on audio and it's Patricia Wants to Cuddle by Samantha Allen. This was just a really fun read. Basically, we're just following some characters as they're on a dating show and it's supposed to be like, the bachelor and they're in like the final like episodes where the main guy is going to pick one of the girls and i think it'll be like the final three so they're off they're going on to a destination and it's like in the middle of nowhere i'm so sorry i feel like i did a horrible job explaining that Okay, yeah, so they arrive on a mysterious land in the Pacific Northwest and they're preparing themselves for another week of extreme sleep deprivation, invasive interviews, and of course the salacious drama eager viewers na nationwide tune in to devour. So yeah, they're in like the middle of nowhere. They bump into Patricia. I thought that this was a really fun listen. It was really entertaining for me and I thought it was funny. I enjoyed it, but I do feel like the end felt really rushed where it just kind of like everything started happening all at once. I don't know. I kind of wish the end would have been a little bit longer, a little more spaced out. I don't know. And this was a multiple point of view. So you got to get into the minds of all of the different contestants. Overall, it was just a fun little read. I enjoyed my time with it. Yeah, I don't really have too much else to say about it. It's one of those books that was just like a little fun romp for me. The next book that I read, I don't have the copy for it because it was a library book, but it's All Down Darkness Wide by Sean Hewitt. This is a memoir and we're following Sean and it's basically him talking about a relationship that he had with someone who was suicidal and what that was like for him and how he was there for that partner and what the relationship looked like after his partner attempted to kill himself and oof yeah it was it was a bit heavy and I definitely suggest checking all the trigger warnings because that one's very very heavy for this one I have so many like complicated feelings because the first chapter of this book I feel like I read it twice and I still just had such a hard time understanding it I can appreciate that the writing was very very beautiful and Sean can definitely write but there was some parts where I just had a hard time focusing and paying attention the parts of the memoir where he's talking about that relationship
relationship and how they met and like everything that they kind of went through together that is when i was like the most invested there are some parts where sean talks about what it was like for him being gay and being Catholic and what it was like navigating that, what it was like for him to leave the church. And for that part, I don't know, like my, I didn't, I just had a hard time like reading through it and I kind of struggled through that a little bit. So I really liked the writing. I thought it was really beautiful, but there were pieces where I wasn't fully in it. I think that some people would really, really enjoy this book. I have a hard time putting this one into words because it's someone's memoir, so I don't want to judge someone's memoir too harshly, but parts that were harder for me to get through, they just kind of dragged on a little bit more. That was also the book that I read with my book club. Yeah, overall, it was okay for me. Okay, so the next book that I read was I think it's Fina. I don't have a copy of this either. This one, I think I read on script possibly, or I got it from the library. I can't remember. Those are usually my two that I use for audiobooks. So I listened to Fina and this one was super short. It was 144 pages. I think it was like three hours listening to it on audio. So it went by really, really fast. Oh, let me tell you what it's about. So basically it's about a couple and Oh no, I do not remember their names. So we have two characters and they are dating and they just broke up. They work together, so it makes it a little bit awkward. They work at like this Ikea type place and basically like a wormhole opens up and an elderly lady just goes missing. So the company makes it so whoever is like the newest two people has to go into the wormhole and try and find this person whenever wormholes open up because that's just a thing that happens. So they have to go together and they just broke up and things are a little awkward, things are a little tense and they have to go and try and retrieve this elderly lady who just went missing. So that's like the whole premise of it. I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was really funny. It was really quick to read. Something that I wouldn't typically pick up, but I don't know, because of how I read The Seep and I really liked The Seep, I wanted to give Fina a try and see how I felt about it. There were some action-y bits and I feel like during those, I kind of spaced out. I just like glazed over it and that's just what happens for me. It's hard for me to read about action and also even just like watching action. I can't focus on everything, so. I just kind of glazed over it. It's part of the series, so I'll probably just listen to the other ones. It looks like there's a second one. It's called Defect. I don't know if there'll be another one after that, but I might give that one a listen and see how, how I like that one. This was just a fun little, little audiobook for me to read. I like to typically have one audiobook that I'm listening to, so that was my pick. I really enjoyed it. The next book that I read was The Seas, and this was a buddy read that I did with Grace and Ivana, and... Okay, we're basically following, what is her name? Do we know her name? Okay, no, we have an unnamed narrator. Oh, she's so cute. So we have our unnamed narrator and she thinks that she's a mermaid and she finds herself in love with a veteran. Hi, hello, editing cat here. Just because I was watching this back and I realized I missed a pretty important detail, but in the story, our main character falls in love with the veteran slash sailor and she's 13 years old when she first meets him and falls in love with him. And during the story, she's older, she's 18, but something to note is that the sailor slash veteran is 13, 14 years older than her, so it's a little bit complicated. Just wanted to include that detail. All right, back to the video. Her dad is no longer around and we just, we follow this little character. She lives in a coastal town and she thinks that she's a mermaid because her dad told her she was a mermaid. So ever since then, she's just thought she's a mermaid. I feel like I did a horrible job at explaining what this book is about. I hope I covered some of it. <laughs> I really, 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 really loved this book. I loved the feeling that it gave me. I loved reading about our main character. I just love the main character so much I could have been in her brain forever it was just like such a little not like a weird book but like there's some little bits that I was like what is going on <laughs> I also really loved reading about the relationship between her and her mother and how they interacted I loved them so much there was also some parts that were like really eerie that I wasn't expecting that felt like very very eerie and I I was here for it. I really liked it. This is when I started annotating, so I have some I have some annotations.
I don't know if you can hear that. I thought it was beautiful too, the way she talked about her dad. For example here, these are the parts of him I find impossible to cut myself loose from. There are beautiful qualities, but beauty is heavy. And though I'm young, I'm getting tired from carrying around the bits and shreds of my father's beauty. I don't know. I just think it's so like beautiful the way she writes. Oof. This one too, where she's talking about her mom and this is what her mom's saying to her. I didn't want to be deaf anymore. I didn't even want to be a writer anymore, she told me. In fact, I realized that the whole deaf writer thing was just a place to hold the want I had had. This was what I had really wanted, a man to climb up on top of me and a baby to come out. It's funny that she grew up not talking because now when she speaks, she says things like this that other people might not say. It's funny to hear her tell stories about how much she loved me as a baby because I think it has gotten harder for her to love me the older I get. I don't know, I just like, I love this book so much. There's another one like where she's talking about her dad. In fact, he told me whispering, leaning forward and tucking his can of beer on the floor beside his armchair. I traded my rib cage for a chunk of ice instead. This explained a lot. From my father, I got recessive genes, fair eyes, fair skin and the mermaid part. The surrender places. I did not get a torso of ice though. Sometimes it feels that way, as if something solid that once was there melted now and still aches with the vacancy of him when it rains. I don't know, I don't know. And then there's just like funny little bits where, so her mom works part-time for a public school and there's one deaf child there. So she says, the school employs my mother as interpreter. Karen, that's the little deaf girl's name, spends a lot of time with my mother outside of school too. And some days when I find my mother and Karen signing away in our kitchen, sometimes I feel jealous and I make the one sign I know, my middle finger at Karen behind her back. Oh my God, I love the main character in this so much. <sighs> It's just like the feeling that a book gives you sometimes and it's hard to put it into words, but this gave me that and I'm so glad I read it. Initially, I read it because of Aggie and her high praises of it and this did not disappoint for me. I'm so glad I finally read it. I'm also really glad I own it and I'm really glad that I was able to annotate in it. Okay, we have one more book to talk about. We haven't even gotten to the challenge part, but I think that's gonna be really fast to get through. The next book that I read was Be Friend by Sigrid Nunez. And look, I have little tabs because I bought tabs to start tabbing up my books. This book, we're following the main character and her friend recently committed suicide and he had a dog and now now that dog is being brought to her to care for. She lives in an apartment where dogs are not allowed, so she's also having to deal with that. She lives in New York. Her apartment is rent controlled, so she's risking possibly losing that apartment. That's like basically like the main premise of it, but this book is so much more than that. If you go into this book thinking that that's exactly what this book is going to be about, it's not. There's so many other conversations that are being had and at first it like threw me off because I was not expecting it but I really really enjoyed all the different conversations that were being talked about before I forget. I buddy read this with Kat and we were talking about it and it just feels like you're reading it and randomly like the story is going off on different tangents as you're like kind of going through and you're like, wait, how did we get here? What, how are we talking about this right now? But I have really enjoyed it. I loved getting lost in those conversations that were being had. I felt like this is a book that gives me so much to think about. It talks a lot about grief with like losing her friend. It talks about the dog and how the dog is dealing with grief and how the dog and the main character are now like healing together and what that relationship is like for them. There's a lot of discussion around writing and conversations regarding writing about other people and is that okay? A lot of questions were being brought up. There's just like a lot in here. I thought that this book, well, I feel like this book I thought was going to like demolish me and it kind of did. <laughs> but like not necessarily in the way that I was expecting. I finished this book like two days ago and it's still like weighing on me in a good, like I, I love this book so much and I want to read more from Sacred Nunez. I've been listening to some interviews that she's done because I just want more. I think it's really impressive what she did with this book. If you're looking for a book that's just like based on like this, what just happened there? <laughs> 
<laughs> if you're looking for a book that's just like about this relationship with this dog and this woman like I think maybe you won't love it as much but kind of just go with it I guess is the way that I would say when you're reading this because I kind of let this book take me in whatever direction it was going I wore my dog shirt today in honor of this book because I loved it so much but yeah I don't know it was really sweet and I feel like I love my dog so much and I'm always like cuddling her but this week while I was reading this book like even more so I was like get over here like I love you so much and oh this book was very funny like this was not very funny but like the main character is funny to me like there are so many parts where I was just like laughing out loud on like what she would say let me see if I can find it I know I saved it please oh let me read something else to you. I see the gray hairs on Apollo's muzzle and the redness rimming his eyes. I see how stiffly he walks some days, how it sometimes takes two efforts for him to get to his feet and I ache. And I'm just like, cause my dog is a little bit older and like I can see like the gray hairs coming on her muzzle. And I'm like, please stop, <laughs> please stop aging. I love you so much. So this book, like reading some of those parts, I was like, Oh, this one's a really good one. What do you talk to him about? The shrink wanted to know. Mostly, I seem to ask questions. What's up, pup? Did you have a nice nap? Were you chasing something in your sleep? Do you want to go out? Are you hungry? Are you happy? Does your arthritis hurt? Why won't you play with other dogs? Are you an angel? Do you want me to read to you? Do you want me to sing? Who loves you? Do you love me? Will you love me forever? Do you want to dance? Am I the best person you've ever had? Can you tell I've been drinking? Do these jeans make me look fat? If we could talk to the animals, goes the song. Meaning, if they could talk to us. But of course, that would ruin everything. I just love this book so much. Okay, the next one that made me laugh out loud was, your whole house smells of dog, says someone who comes to visit. I say I'll take care of it, which I do, by never inviting that person to visit again. That is, that was perfect. I like had to put the book down because I was just laughing. And there's just like little moments like that sprinkled through the book, which I very much so enjoyed. It felt like my humor. The more I sit with it, the more I love it. I'm just so glad I read it. I feel like if you see this on my 2023 favorites, don't be surprised because I just, I loved it so much. So I ended off April with a bang. I started it with a bang. I feel like overall April was a really good reading month for me, but now it's time to do our reading challenge check-in. So let me pull up my story graph. So for my 2023 reading goal, I have that set to 50 books and currently I have read 22 books. So that puts me at 44% complete. I'm doing good there. Reading challenges next. So I'm participating in four challenges. I'm doing the Shake Up Your Shelves challenge, the 10 books, 10 decades challenge, the five rereads challenge, and the 12 books recommended by 12 friends. So for the Shake Up Your Shelves challenge, last time we checked in, I was at six prompts out of 16 complete, and that put me at 38%. For this challenge, I am going to be putting the friend in two different categories. So the first category that I'm going to be putting the friend under is a book about a subject that scares you or something you know nothing about. I feel like I've been avoiding this book because it was about a dog and about a friend committing suicide. This is typically something that I might not read because I love dogs so much and I was very much so nervous about how I would feel reading about this book knowing that it's about a dog who just lost its owner. That like to me, oof, no, like even just like thinking about it like makes me want to cry. So that's why I'm putting that book under that prompt. The next prompt that I'm going to be putting the friend for is a book about non-romantic love because it, we see the love between, you know, the new owner and the dog. And I thought that this could fit that prompt so well. So that's it. I'm going to put those two there. I don't think I'm completing any of the other prompts for this one. So now that puts me at eight prompts complete out of 16, which brings me to halfway. I'm at 50% complete. So that's exciting for the other challenges. So for the 10 books, 10 decades, last time we checked in, I was at three prompts out of 10 complete and that's where I'm still at. So I'm still at 30% complete. For the five rereads challenge, I am still at zero percent complete uh I really gotta work on that one because I haven't done anything for it there's a few books I've been considering doing a reread of recently so hopefully in the next coming months I'll have reread something for the 12 books recommended by 12 friends 
Last time we checked in, I was at two prompts out of 12, which brought me to 17%. And that's currently still where I am. I have not read any books for that yet, but I did recently pick up a book for it. I bought it. So in my next video, it's probably gonna be a book haul. So you'll see what book that is. I'll let you know in that video. Hopefully next month, I will have read another book for that because I'm very much so behind on that challenge. So hopefully I get caught up. That's pretty much it for the reading challenge check-in. I told you it was gonna be fast because I literally only made progress on two prompts. So that was the month of April for me. I had a very, very, very great reading month. I found some new favorites. And while I didn't do too much on my reading uh, challenges, I feel like I'm doing really well on my reading goal which is great. Oh, I didn't show you guys, but I'm wearing my favorite shirt because I knew I was gonna talk about the friend, but my favorite part, you just wait, is the back. Isn't that so cute? I think it's so cute. This is like my prized possession. I will never get rid of this shirt because I love it so, so, so much. And I had to wear it for this video. It was only fitting, so I had to wear it. But yeah, wow, this was a long video. I've been recording for a very long time, almost an hour. That's it, I feel like I have nothing else to say. I'm done. I would love to know what books you read this month. Did you read any favorites? I hope you had a great reading month in the month of April, and I hope May is also a great reading month for you as well. I hope that for myself. I hope I didn't jinx myself with the amount of times I've said that I'm out of my reading slump. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for clicking on my video, and I'll see you in the next one.